everyone so today we'll be talking about intestinal motility and enteric nervous system so in this video we'll be talking about first why we are reading this topic what is need of this motility what are different patterns of labor in your gut how we can control this motility patterns and what if they are affected so function of intestinal motility now there are different movements in our intestine whether they occur during digestive period or in between two meals so they have different functions first is in interdigestive period so this is to transport basal secretion during fasting from our gut and to clear different residue whether these are dead cells or different secretions left over during digestive period the movements are required in our gut to mix the chyme with secretions to circulate the chyme throughout gut and to propel the content from oral cavity toward anus different patterns are available in intestine these are segmental contractions peristalsis and migratory motor complexes so one by one we'll see these patterns and how they are regulated but before that we should know the layers of gut as you can see here these are the layers of gut starting with serosa then longitudinal muscle layer then circular muscle layer between longitudinal and circular muscle layer there are myotrich plexus then there is some mucosa between circular and sub mucosa there are sub mucus plexus these two plexus are nerve plexus which basically coordinate these movements the innermost is mucosa as you can see here this is some mucosal plexus toward the epithelium and there is myotrich plexus so these are innervating the epithelium of gut and depending on different stimulations they basically have interneurons which can inhibit or stimulate each other accordingly they control different muscle activity the same is shown here also now let us start with first movement that is peristalsis what peristalsis mean it is local stimulation of gut produces excitation above and inhibition below is called peristalsis what does that mean is if a food bolus come in our gut anywhere there is local locally stimulated the nerves as i explained the enteric nervous system the both the plexuses so they are stimulated that's local stimulation which leads to contraction above and relaxation below as shown here also if this is bolus this part is contracted and this part is relaxed what that mean how it occur basically this is a zoomed view of this segment where you can see the bolus is coming which is innervating which is basically stimulating the nerve fibers which are present here and this is the plexus myotrich plexus which so the stimulation goes to these plexus which lead to contraction of smooth muscle here above it and downward inhibitory neurotransmitters are released to relax it so you can see if substance p and acetylcholine is released contraction occur if nitric oxide or vib or atp are released inhibition occur that means relaxation occur that's how peristalsis occur so contraction above relaxation below as you can see here this lead to this contraction will force the bolus toward anal cavity and this relaxation lead to easy passage of that bolus so that's how it's called peristalsis so this is a propulsive movement coming to next movement which is segmental contraction as name show segmental compared with the peristalsis these are peristalsis as i explained in last slide here you can see these are alternate contraction and relaxation for example here this part is contracted but next this part is relaxed here this part is relaxed and in next moment it's contracted that's why it's called alternate contraction and relaxation 
and as you can see this moment peristalsis is for propelling the content but as you can see here this type of movement is to mix the content with different secretions in our the rate is the rate is around 3 to 12 per second next pattern is migratory motor complex which are the organized fasting contractile pattern which propel the undigested food residue and obviously the dead epithelium cells these occur every hour around or more than that and during fasting so if you don't eat food or between we can say between two meals the contraction occur so that the sloughed of material the the residual food or different secretions they can be propelled okay so and this is a uh, more uh, wide contraction than peristalsis peristalsis around 1 cm uh, per minute but here it's 5 cm per minute so that the secretions the residual secretions can be propelled easily so that's all about how basically which type of contractions occur in our gut now let's see how these are controlled so first is if you see control there are three things which are controlling the intestinal motility first is the interstitial cell of car these are the pacemaker cells situated in our gut throughout in various layers these are present as you can see in the graph these slow waves as you can see here these very slow waves which are not touching threshold these are because of interstitial shell of car so interstitial cell of car are not responsible for any activity but they have a rhythmic discharge which is having a slow wave activity but on stimulation of gut whether it can be a food it can be a stretch it can be a painful stimuli which lead to action potential generated on these slow waves and these uh, action potential leads to movement in gut okay if you see what can stimulate that then parasympathetic stimulation will increase the action potential peak and sympathetic stimulation will decrease as you can see here they hyperpolarize the cell means the action potential the membrane potential goes toward more negative phase so decreases movement so is it clear that interstitial cell of car are responsible for slow waves parasympathetic stimulation does increases motility sympathetic decreases motility coming to enteric nervous system as you can see here enteric nervous system so these as i explained in layers there are mitotic plexus which is responsible for control of motility other plexus submucosal plexus is responsible for gastric secretions and blood flow we talk about so if we talk about movement then it's mitotic plexus which is responsible which is responsible for different reflexes in our gut we stimulate gut we stimulate gut there are different reflex reactions occur because of this enteric nervous system that's how even if we say if we eat food here and the food come in stomach then the stomach dilates that is called vasorelaxation that is called vasovagal receptive relaxation so that is a reflex because of this and that's how and that's how there are various reflexes in our gut because of the vagus and because of the mitotic plexus coming to hormonal control there are various hormones which increase motility gastrin cck cholecystokinin serotonin there are various hormones which decrease which inhibit motility or decrease motility those are secretin and glucagon what if what if this movement is affected if there is no plexus available that is paralytic illness so it will be paralyzed no movement at all if there are no the food will the food will be obstructed that is intestinal obstruction hirschsprung disease is basically by birth the plexus are not here and that's how there are no movement that is hirschsprung disease if there is increased movement hypermotility that is ibd inflammatory bowel disease because of any infection and if obviously when we talk about motility it's not about gut it's about sphincter also 
so if sphincter sphincters don't have a proper uh, motility pattern so they can't contract they are relaxed then fecal incontinence also can occur so that's all about the motility why it occur how it occur who control it and if affected what can happen so that's all about motility and enteric motility and enteric nervous system thanks for watching you can comment below you can comment below thank you